Toriano Johnson, how are you doing? I can't complain. I'm blessed. That's right. Talk talk to us, Mr. Johnson. For those of you just tuning in, we're joined by middleweight Toriano Johnson, who, if you're not following on, on Twitter, you most definitely should. You can learn a lot of things at T U R E A N O 1984 on Twitter. So give him a follow now. Uh, he is a, a middleweight. We just saw some middleweight action this past weekend. I'm sure he has a lot of commentary about it. And, uh, you know, a lot of middleweights out there in the landscape doing some things. So we will definitely get your take on it and see what's happening with you. So what what's the latest happening with you, Mr. Johnson? Talk to us. Ah, oh, well, you know, just just me just being me, going out fishing as much as I can up here in the Bahamas. Uh, but, hey, uh, besides the boxing ring, I'm just watching these guys go at it, you know, from the TV side and uh, just finished watching the Peter Quillen fight and Andy Lee along with Garcia and Lamont. And uh, right now, me and my guys are trying to make something happen, you know, uh, with Sebastian Heelan. I hope that everything works out in my favor to get this fight happening. Well, let's start, since you brought them up, let's start with Quill and Lee, since they are in your weight division. What did you think of the fight? Oh, well, you know, uh, I'm not much of a great fan of Quillen. Many people would would understand that, but uh, I have to give respect to Quillen. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of my words I got to eat back right now. That I feel, I feel as though Quillen had done enough to win that fight against Lee. If I were to, to, to really be fair, I think Quillen had won it at least by a round. But, uh, you know, the draw is, is not a bad decision neither. But I, I really felt that there, it was uh, at least a round or more for Quillen favor. But, hey, it happens in the game. And I, I, I guess Quillen isn't so upset about it neither, so why should anybody else be? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. He, he wasn't upset at all. <laughs> that's, usually, that's kind of unusual for a fighter, undefeated fighter. You know, you think he'd be kind of torn up about his record, you know, getting messed up. But, no, he did not care. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I thought you won by point. What would your reaction have been? Oh, for me, you know, uh, God, why you want to go there? I, I've been put up against the wall with a question like, no, not even a question, but reality did take place once with me and Curtis Stevens. <laughs> the fight didn't turn out in my favor. And in fact, I, I know it was an unfair call. So my reaction would have been the same reaction as I did in my last my very first and last loss against Curtis Stevens. It was an unfair one, and I would have out rightfully straight off the top. I would have argued it. Hey, let's make this I, happen. Let's get this fix. I did watch you that know, fight. I did. So you got the short end of the stick on that fight. Yeah, I was there. That was the last time I saw you. Um, hey, you've done good since then, though. You know, you know, four or five winning streak. I've been on TV what at least twice since then. Um, oh, and you yeah. were in the running. You were in the running for the Triple G fight. Um, you were almost got it. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Man, you know, it's it's another one of those doggy dog world. Uh, that's a case where, you know, I, I've been given a call to fight Triple G, and uh, HBO had approved the fight. And uh, being asked by Triple G's team, you know, to the fight, they end up turning around and said, uh, sorry, we decided to go with somebody else. You know, uh, in, in fact, they went they went with Willie Monroe. Uh, I'm a fighter, so you're going to have to excuse me. I don't like any fighter, whether no matter what weight class, two pounds to 2,000 pounds. If you're a fighter, you're a suspect, and now they see it, we got a problem. And, uh, yeah, Willie Monroe, I got a problem with him. You know, he he got that fight, and I think that was an unfair deal. He's a guy who's under me as far as, you know, he's a less risky fighter. And Triple G Joe's decided to go along with that fight, so, yes, I'm very upset about that. Uh, and, and I'm still upset about it. And uh, and I'm I'm upset about a lot of things. Jeez, not a good point. What are you upset about? Tell us why you Well, you know, uh, Miguel Cotto sat out. You know, uh... <laughs> He has some series going on with him where he has the op- option of picking whom he wish to fight. Okay, let, let's give him that much. But at the same time, you know, he's taking forever to decide whom he wants to fight. 
Give credit now. Yes, he had just decided on whom he's going to fight. Yes, okay, finally he decided he's going to go with Daniel Gale. Am I happy about it? No, I'm not happy about it. He didn't pick me. Why didn't he pick me? Again, these guys then pick guys who are less riskier. And, uh, yeah, Miguel Cotto going with Daniel Gale, Triple G going with Willie Monroe. Now, what's going to happen? I'm, am I going to get George Sebastian Healing? Can can I get a fair play somewhere? I mean, I'm the WBC Silver Bell champion here, you know, I think I, I should be able to give the opportunity to fight one of the best fighters somewhere. If you're going to give me the last guy on the block, that is George Sebastian Healing, well, give me it. I will take it. Please give me it. And, uh, hey, I, I just hope WBC allows this to happen. You know, hey, let some sort of fair play take place and let fair happen with me and Sebastian Healing fight for the number one contendership. Let, let, let's make a good opponent for Triple G, I mean, to be honest, you know, a lot of these guys out there, if they're not afraid of Triple G, they just simply don't want to fight him. I want to fight him. And I believe Sebastian Hillens wants to fight him as well. So how about these two guys who are determined to fight Hillen, who feel as though they, that they can win, why don't let these two guys go at it, head to head? And then these two are two exciting fighters, let them go at it. So again, I say we need to push you know, the TV network, the, the, uh, the WBC sanctioning body, to make this fight happen with Toriano Johnson and Sebastian Healing. I, 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 I think that's a good fight to make. Uh, Lester, what do you rate it? Um, Sebastian, right, he's won year two. So, yeah, the winner of that would be a mandatory for, for the title. That makes a lot of sense. Because I think you, both of you were almost going to fight either Cotto or Triple G. So yeah, yeah, make that fight. Um, who this? Who is Highlands promoter? Mm. I know who his manager is because his manager also manages Kodo. But I'm well, not I know sure of his promoter. And Kodo. But if there was, you know, I guess a um, an off an offer. From you know whoever promotes him to to come fight him in Argentina, would that be a problem? Listen, I I'm from the Bahamas. You tell me when was the last time I fought home here? Oh yeah, just once, just once in my professional yeah. boxing career. I've known myself even as an amateur fighting in my opponent's backyard. In fact, fighting at that dinner table. So it makes <laughs> no difference whether I go to Argentina to fight this guy. I tell you, I would do it in a heartbeat. I'm an action fighter. I come to bring the action. And that's clearly clear cut. That's how it is. I'm going to bring it. So let's just make the fight happen. Absolutely. So are you in, uh, are you in talks with anyone right now or even just pre- preliminary talks for any upcoming bouts? Well, yes. Right now, my, my main priority is, you know, uh, since we were unable to get the Triple G fight, since we were unable to get the Miguel Cotto fight, now our third option is Sebastian Hill. I don't have a fourth option, but I'm sure my manager does. They probably have something in the background. But I know right now our third option is Sebastian Healin. And, and this is the fight that I was told that we are still in negotiation with, but they are pushing effort to make it a mandatory match for the WBC number one contendership title fight. Excellent. I'm, I'm glad the negotiations are ongoing. Um, I didn't even know if you were reaching out to him. But, yeah, I hope that gets made. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, you, I'm telling you this right now, you know, on air. And not just air, as in I'm on the radio air right now. But in person, Coriano Johnson wants to fight Sebastian Healing for the, cont- for the number one contendership spot. What do you think of uh, Highland as a fighter? You know, I, I assume you watched his fight with Matthew Macklin. Oh, yes, I, I watched several of his fights, and I think he's a phenomenal fighter. He's an action-packed kind of guy. He comes and he brings it. And uh, like myself, you know, uh, we, we both have similar boxing style. And I feel as though these two styles only make a great fight. And uh, I think that is great. That's a plus for the fans. And a plus for each one of us for the winner would, it, would be able to actually show their talent to the world against one of the greatest fighters 
in the future to be, which is Triple G. And uh, I feel as though I'm the one well deserving of it, and I'm the one who's going to come up vict victorious. Let's see, one All of our Twitter followers has a question for you. Go ahead, Ryan. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I didn't have a question. One of our Twitter followers, Simplificado, Simplificado wants to know, Toriano, if you don't get the Highland fight, would you consider a rematch with Steven? Oh, well, then you would have to go back and follow me on Twitter again because immediately after that fight with Curtis Stevens, I requested, requested, cried, and I plead for an immediate rematch, for an immediate rematch, which Curtis Stevens felt as though there was no need to fight me anymore. But uh, mm. as it is now, I think Curtis Stevens is in need to fight, fight me now too. Well, I guess to reestablish yourself again. But yes, of course, you know, uh, after speaking with my managers over and over, yes, I would love again to have a rematch with Curtis Stevens. But at this moment, my main objective right now, unable to get the Triple G, unable to get the Kodo, but I am crying and begging for an opportunity to get Sebastian Healing. If not able, then yes, Curtis Stevens, you are up next on the baddest mound. <laughs> Speaking of Stevens, uh, would you fight him in uh, a BKB pit? Oh, that 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 is my action kind. That 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 is just all out action for me. And yes, I, I would definitely love to take part in the BKB. Uh, I I think it's a fun you know implementation to the boxing program. And yeah, you know, straight up, I would love to fight Curtis Stevens in the BKB. Who do you think won that fight between him and, um, and Gabriel Rosado? Well, ah, there you done it. Uh, okay. Well, I got to give it to Curtis. Curtis, he, 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 to me, I felt as though he, he won the fight. You know, in fact, I felt he won, you know, pretty much all the rounds. You know, he, he was more aggressive. And he was landing at least one to two clean punches rather than Rosado landing almost nothing at all, or just pretty much touching. But hey, uh, it doesn't look like Curtis had a problem with it neither. Did it look like to you? I mean, I hear nothing about it. Well, they interviewed him after the fight. He thought he won clearly, and so did Rosado. They, they both thought, you know, they got robbed. Uh, but yeah, I thought I thought it was close. I, I did have Stevens winning, but I think Shane yeah, Rosado, Rosado, had Rosado more of an busier. issue with the outcome than either of them. <laughs> she supposedly has more of an issue with everything than all of us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So let's see. What can we ask you about? Well, you know, we've got the big mega fight happening next month. What are your predictions for Mayweather versus Pacquiao? Uh, my prediction if all goes how fights ought to go, then I would give it to Pacquiao. But then, again, boxing always don't go how boxing ought to go. You know, you never know. A guy could be winning the fight for 12 rounds, but in the last couple of seconds, something devastating can happen. And if that was to happen, something devastating to happen, then God may weather. You know, that would be a lightning in a bottle kind of thing. You know, so, yeah, I, I would go with Manny Pacquiao, you know, if everything go the way it's supposed to go. Floyd Mayweather if lightning strikes. Lightning strikes. So do you think Floyd could stop Pacquiao? Like I said, you know, lightning striking, <laughs> you never know. You know, something devastating. Pacquiao could trip on his heel or something, you know. Uh, but who, who knows, you know, Pacquiao could, that might just not be his day. That might just not be his day, and Floyd could uh, take advantage of it, you know, and, and do what he does best, and that is out. Thank you. But in a while, I'm going for Pacquiao. Yeah, so both the guests on the show tonight have picked Pacquiao to beat Mayweather. This is uh, I'm, pretty surprising. I'm very surprised because I thought I would expect a split, you know, minimally. Ooh, we might have to start polling the listeners, too. Let's see. 
What else can we ask? I love your opinions on fight. You are so great on Twitter. I love following you, especially on fight nights, because you're very candid with your your opinions on the fight action. If you could change one thing about boxing and what's happening in boxing today, what would you change? Wow. Why you want to do that? Okay. Well, because you're very I, smart, and I like your opinion, no, so I know you have to give me the real. I'm only getting it there. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for asking. Well, you know, many may hate it, many may like it. As far as I can tell you about it, this is my point of view, and if you got a problem, if you got a problem with it, step in the ring with me. I feel as though they not. I feel as though there are too many sanctioning bodies right now and uh, making it a very difficult job for fighters them to fight each other. And, uh, you know, with so many different belts in the league now, you know, who is actually a champion, you know, the TBE, I mean, the best ever. Who Who is? And, uh, you know, I also believe with the TV networks, you know, the HBOs and the, and the Showtime, I feel that, they, you know, Maybe if they cut a little bit of slack and allow fighters them to fight on different networks, you know, would give fans them the op- option and the opportunity to see fighters them fight more often. So yeah, I believe with all of this together, we we can have a more open dialogue between boxers, promoters, and TV network. If we can come to some agreement to just let fighters them fight, I think things would be better in boxing. So if I could have changed it. I would minimize the amount of sanctioning bodies. I would also uh, do an open contract with the TV networks. That's that's just the way I see it. Yeah, I guess um, the, the TV network issue is uh, probably why we're not seeing Stevenson uh, and Kovalev this year. And I didn't say it. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> Of of the fights that are coming, other than you know the super fights happening May May second, which fights that have been made are you as an observer looking forward to seeing? Matisse and Pavlovnikov. Oh, uh, I knew you were going to say that. I'm a fan of the both of those two, and I I wish I was fighting on that card. I wish I was. <laughs> I be, I believe that card would have only gotten better if I was fighting on it. it, it I, I, forgive me. I'm not a technical fighter, but I'm a guy who goes in there and I come to fight. And hey, you you most likely will get a bloodbath. And Matisse and Bogdanov, they are like that. These guys come to really throw it and clash it out. I mean, you're going to see total annihilation inside the ring with these two fighters. And wow. And and please don't ask me who's going to win because I love the both of their styles and I believe. It's only going to be such a good combination. I mean, you got Matisse, you got a little bit of boxing skills going on, and Provognikov, who just got that iron chin, you know, hardcore, rugged, styling kind of style just coming at you. Wow, it's, the, the thought of it is just mind blowing. Just mind blowing. That's a good one, too. Um, what is your prediction for the, uh, a draw, a knockout? Should we not blink or get our popcorn? What is your prediction for the fight? I think ultimately, with the characteristics of these two fighters, there will be a knockout. Who it will be is unpredicted, but there will be a knockout. There will be a knockout. I can't predict who, who's going to win my knockout because the two of these guys are very good at what they do, and that's knocking out people. Mm-hmm. It's going. To, it's going to be a great. It's going to be a great one. I'm looking forward to it too. So, Toriano, for those of who aren't currently following you in social media, why don't you let uh, let the listeners know what, how they can keep up with you, and so they can interact with you on fight nights and follow your career and cheer you on. Oh well, yes. Again, my name is Toriano Johnson from the Bahamas. You all can always contact me. I'm making it very simple. I'm on Twitter. You can catch me at T-U-R-E-A-N-O 1984. Again, T-U-R-E-A-N-O 1984. Toriano 1984 on Twitter all the time. Uh, I don't block anybody like a Willie Monroe. You know, if you have an issue with me, fine about it. Uh, I'm good with it. You know, if you 
If you want to fight about it, I'm even better with that. You can get into the ring, put on some gloves, and deal with it there. But don't expect me to block you. You know, I'm good. You know, with whatever you have to say. You know, your criticism could be good or bad, but it always will be positive on my side to help me grow better. So uh, follow me on Twitter, man. Let's talk. Let me know what you got. What you thinking of? Uh, what you cooking over there? What you cooking over there? Follow on Twitter. Toriano, 1984, man. Follow this guy. Tell me, you won't regret it. Oh yeah. Hey, you asked what I'm cooking over here. What you cooking over? You got some cons cooking over there today? Check this woman out. My goodness. Yeah, you know my wife right here on the side of me listening to you ask me what I cooking. Well, the truth is, she just finished cooking some nice steam cones. So yeah, you 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 know just how to do it here in the Bahamas, and I and I'm enjoying uh-huh. the meal right now to speak. Well, let, well, I'm gonna let you get back to it. Well, good luck, and we look forward to seeing you in the ring, and we definitely look forward to talking to you on Twitter again. Uh, thank y'all so much, and God bless y'all. God bless you too. God bless you too.